laid it all on the line for this country. He's very extremely patriotic. He built the middle class in New Orleans. One of his mantras was, you know, go big or go home. I think because of Mr. Higgins' landing craft, literally thousands and thousands of lives were saved. He was larger than life, and he was a household name. He wound up in the wood business here in New Orleans, and with excess wood that wouldn't sell, he started making small boats. He came up with the boat he called the Eureka, which was shallow draft, had a semi-tunnel stern, a strong rounded bow called a spoonbill bow. The advantage of this boat was it could pull up on a shore and retract without damaging the hull or the propeller. It could go over floating logs in the river without damaging the hull of the propeller. This is the kind of thing you needed to pull logs out of the swamp. It was also the same qualities you needed in a landing craft. It was all born by necessity, the need to get into shallow water areas. Finally, the Navy asked him to build a Eureka. So Mr. Higgins built a 30-foot Eureka, just like he had built for his, his, his lumber days. And that's what the military saw and liked. And the Marine Corps especially liked it, more so than the Navy. The Navy was more prone to wanting a boat designed by their own small boat desk of the Bureau of Ships. But it was only because of the Marine Corps that the Eureka really got the ability to be tried out by the military. The Marines saw it, the Marines knew it, they pushed it, and the rest is history. The idea of the ramp comes from 1937. They took that Eureka, 36-foot Eureka landing boat, chopped the bow off, and put the ramp on it. And that's how you got the LCVP, Landing Craft Vehicle Personnel. What the military desperately needed was a bridge to the beach. They had the ships at sea and the shore they wanted to take. But they had to have a way to get their men and material from the ships to the shore. And Mr. Higgins gave them that bridge. His landing craft gave them the ability to move men and material across the waters and over an open beach. So he gave them the last component that they needed for the invasion. If you look at how quick he went from 1939 to the 1940s, it's, an, it's amazing the rapid growth and the production that they were able to produce in that short period of time. And he hired 20,000 people to go to work. And it was constant work and it was 24 seven. And it was for the duration of the war. And he paid equal pay without regard to race, creed, or color. They shattered production records. I, I still see the assembly line of uh, LCVPs going out the back of like the city park plan on to rail cars. And they're, they, they haven't been painted yet, so they're painting them as they're going down to the water. I mean, these things are almost unheard of today. It was a crucial and critical component of the war effort. We need to remind younger generations the importance of this guy, but I, but I do. I, th I think he was larger than life, and um, he was quite the individual. To me, this is the number one instrument of war that truly did allow us to win the war.